Now, spoiler, 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 spoiler. If you've not seen Spider-Man Far From Home, you need to stop watching this now. Hi, my name is Pamela Stewart, and today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, I'm an old school Spider-Man fan. I collected the comics back in the 80s. He was my ultimate, and still is, I have to say, the ultimate superhero to me. Always selfless, young, funny, just tries so hard. And I think we, a lot of us can relate to, you know, trying and maybe it not working out all the time. This new incarnation, which I'm kind of tired of them rebooting Spider-Man every couple years. Like, I love Tommy McGuire. I thought he did a good job in one and two. Three, I think the storytelling went all over the place in that one. But Tobey Maguire did bring a lot of Peter Parker, his personality, to the role. Andrew Garfield, he had his positives too. He looked more like Peter Parker than I imagined from the comic books from the 80s. They did, they were better on the CGI. They did more of a swinging action and became more realistic. The new ones, uh, I think they, like Marvel knows what they're doing when they pick Tom Holland because he's just a little muffin. I mean, who doesn't love Tom, Tom Holland? Just like my Oliver, he's a muffin. He's a muffin. Spider-Man Homecoming was very good. And I think they captured young Spider-Man extremely well, the high school level superhero. They did a lot of great comedy. I have to say Tom Holland has the voice I imagined for Peter Parker and the kind of awkwardness that he always had and the intelligence as well. They had forgot a few things about the character, which I was okay with for the first movie. And then we got to Spider-Man Far From Home, which I'm kind of, I guess I've got used to everything being so good with Marvel that it's upsetting when something is not as good as it could have been. Now, one of the things that I love most about Spider-Man is his sense of humor. Whenever he was fighting bad guys, it wasn't that he was super brave, but he acted super brave because he would be cracking jokes. And then as you're reading it, you're, you're cracking up at what he's saying, but you know he's still terrified. In the new iteration, I don't feel, I feel like we're more laughing at the situational comedy that comes up. But there's a scene about midway through the movie where he's asked to take off his clothes by this really beautiful spy woman. And he's, you know, caught by one of his classmates. And they think he's there trying to buy sex, which is hilarious. But it's more situational comedy, not something that Peter himself come up with. And I feel like they almost weakened the character because in the comic books, especially when he started interacting with the Avengers, he never wanted to join the Avengers. He was always a very independent agent. He was the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Now, if there was a world-shattering event, he would come out and he would do what needed to be done. He'd team up with people like Daredevil and Wolverine and all the other top, you know, comic book heroes of the time. And those would always usually end hilariously. But he never wanted to permanently time, team up with anybody. He was always kind of a loner. So it surprises me that they're painting Peter Parker now as uh, someone who has a mentor and somebody who needs group dynamic to, like, he's going to be leading the Avengers. And that's something, at least back in the 80s and 90s when I was really heavily into comics, that wasn't the vibe that Peter ever had. So those are my issues with uh, Peter, Peter, with Spider-Man Far From Home. What I did love about the movie, the new version of MJ, I think, is phenomenal. I think her her under, her under sarcastic sense of humor kind of matches up. I love the little romance between um, him and MJ. I love the action. I think the CGI only keeps getting better. And I think it's because Tom Holland actually does a lot of the stunts himself because he is so athletic. And if you haven't seen Tom Holland, go and watch lip sync battle with Tom Holland, him doing Rihanna's umbrella song, and then you will ask no more if Tom Holland is capable of doing backflips and, and swings. If anyone could do it, could be Spider-Man, it, it is definitely Tom Holland. And I want Marvel to give him more of his old character, more of his strength of character. He believed in himself, he tried no matter what, and he was kind of a lone wolf. Now, I mean, I'm willing to see him grow and I, of course, I accept and love this movie. I think it's a great portrayal of him, but I don't know if it's true to the source material. So that was my, you know, my main quibbles and the things I loved the most. Also, another thing that came to me while watching this movie is that it was 
so true to the panels and when um, Spider-Man versus Mysterio. I almost felt it was way like, in the comics, it was way more emotional because they really got into Peter's psychological issues with being a hero and maybe not being able to win. And they visually portrayed some of that, but I don't think they got into the depth of emotion. They undercut a lot of their drama with humor. And I think that's a, one of Marvel's weaknesses is that they don't allow you to fully feel some of the dramatic scenes and they just throw that humor in. Like the first movie actually did much better with the emotional scenes. Like whenever Peter was underneath the building in the first movie and he had to kind of, you know, choose to be Spider-Man again and to dig deep. That was a Spider-Man I knew. Also in the first movie, they did get some of the humor right when he was taking on the bad guys in the very first scene, but they really haven't revisited that. Like when they have, haven't seen him battling any villains one-on-one -on -one and using that sense of, that, you know, biting sense of humor, you know, throws off the villains and actually gives him more self-confidence. I guess I'm torn. I, I hope the next time, and I'm definitely gonna watch more of these because they're entertaining as all get out. And I love Spider-Man, favorite character of all time. I mean, Spider-Man Journal. My actual Spider-Man comics are put up in plastic, of course. Of course I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there first person on opening night. I hope that they bring back some of his humor and some of his self-motivation and onus. Not so dependent on the Avengers and having a group dynamic and having to be tied to other movies. I just love my Spider-Man. And that's all I have for you today. If you have opinions about Spider-Man Far From Home or Spider-Man Homecoming, I would love to hear your opinions are down in the uh, comment box. Please share with me. I'd love to have a very civil discussion with you concerning that. 